seeing the mill spinning and turning, seeing people wandering around up and down the mill and, 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 and the voices at the mill, you know, hearing people talking about it. And uh, once I got a lot of work done at home that needed to be done, a lot of renovation work, uh, I said to my wife, oh, fancy volunteer, and I'll pop around and have a chat with the boys. And, uh, the, re the rest is history. engineering background. My background is very different to a milling background, shall we say, um, but I'm quite handy so it's just a case of getting stuck in and now I'm a miller. <laughs> this is the new sale. Yes, sale number two. Yeah. We're gradually assembling and uh, so as you see there's quite a lot of uh, one-off work. Did all kinds of different different jobs. I worked in healthcare, general and psychiatric healthcare in prisons, prison healthcare management. I was in a police detective, specialist detective. Took a two-year career break. We travelled around England for two years, myself and my wife, and other areas of the world, and uh, decided to eventually settle down here. So that's where we came to in 2006. As it goes round and the flour is being produced, the uh, grain goes in the middle of the course, and the flour comes out here between the fixed bottom stone and the rotating top one. And uh, there's only one chute for the flour to go down below to go into the stacks. And uh, on this stone, yeah, the flour actually needs to be swept around until it gets to the uh, exit hole. And Mike has been making this uh, sweeper here whose function is to stir up the flour and uh, shuffle it round. You don't always need these but um, on this stone you evidently did because uh, the last one broke off <laughs> and we discovered that because the flour wasn't coming down the chute anymore. The mill was originally built we think around 1813 and there's no definitive documentation that gives us the exact date um, but around the, then the mill was built uh, built by a local firm of millwrights and continued production into and around about 1900 1920s um, when it started falling into disrepair the more modern role the mills took over the, uh, the role of, uh, of milling much far more efficiently um, the sales started to fall to pieces um, and in about mm, during the time of the war, the mill did run again from a steam engine, uh, just out on the grass verge out there from a belt drive. And then after the war, there was no need for it and it fell into uh, major disrepair. Um, it was bought in 1987 by a group of enthusiasts, idiots, whatever you want to call them. And uh, with the aim really of making the mill look pretty again, putting it back together and seeing if they could get it looking nice again. Um, during the course of the renovations decided actually we can get this going again, get it working and it ground its first bag of meal in 2001 and it's now the only windmill of its type um, this has been confirmed in the world a 12 sided smock tower mill, wooden sides built on a brick base still making meal, so she's quite a unique meal, grade 2 star listed so just one down from Munich Cathedral and we, or they, including myself since, involved in the maintenance of mill have restored it to as it would have been in around about 1900, so probably at its peak. It'll make a lot of noise.
My role is as a, a miller and a conservator, basically. Um, there are three of us are millers. Uh, one, one of us, uh, as of the millers, is knocking on a bit now. He's 83 years old. Our Alan has scoliosis. He finds it increasingly difficult, but he, difficult to run the mill, especially on his own. But he's a still walk the mill. He doesn't want to give up, so he gets up from Kent as often as he can to help us. We have Dave uh, Pierce, who's the brains behind the madness. He's our millwright, um, engineer by trade, Dr. Dave Pierce, and uh, he works out all the mathematics and the geometry and so on and so forth, and points us in the right direction as to what needs doing. But I, I trained on, on site, I spent quite a lot of hours around here, listening to the mill, learning around the mill. Uh, you have to get to know all its idiosyncrasies. Um, she has a temper, she gets the ump, bits fall out, bits fall off. And uh, yeah, I can run the mill on my own quite happily now with both stones in gear and the wire machine for making our finest white flowers, our white flowers, a centrifugal dresser, all the little bits and pieces in the mill and generally maintenance. So yeah, um, bagging up the flour, distributing the flour that we make. At one end, we get the bran. So that's the husks of the wheat. Yeah. Whatever it is we're, we're doing. And what do you do? You sell you that? You sell that? Yeah, sell it or give it away. But on the whole, we can't sell it now. In fact, there's a, a startup company in Cambridge, a scientific startup company, that's working on developing moths that eat organic waste. And they want to make it a, a national thing, so fantastic thing. They've started using this. The, the, the larvae love it, and it's great for slugs. Put it in your garden, the slugs eat it, drop it. Brilliant stuff. Oh yeah, they're gorgeous. Good trade, isn't it? Well, we're thinking about doing that actually. <laughs> Otherwise, brand new bag. Then at this end, you get the finest white. So it's not necessarily as strong as some of your Canadians and no. Frenchies, but it is as strong as it gets. Best of all, it's six hundred pound a ton of wheat. But we've sold that uh, to a restaurant in Cambridge who was even making pasta and um, breadsticks and things, but it so fine. And then we mix two parts of that with one part of this product to make a white flour. It's all great. It's not nothing. So that's just two parts of that, that's, yeah, to one part of that to make our white flour. Right. It's all the same kind of strength, I suppose, because it's yeah. the same parent wheat. So even the whole meal is, is, is as strong as the whole meal is going to get. Um, the spelt is as strong as you're going to get in England. I've never used it. It is fun. It's good exercise when you're running the mill on your own because you're forever up and down the stairs. If you've got visitors, you're showing them around. A bag of meal, for example, here will fill up in eight to ten minutes if the mill's running on a good day, so you're forever checking that. You've got the stones to keep an eye on upstairs. Make sure the, the, uh, the bins are, are, are full of um, either wheat, spelt, rye, or whatever, whatever we're producing that day. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's good fun and it's a very nice bunch of people. You, you work with and you may get to meet some cracking people as visitors to the mill as well you get some really interesting folk uh, folk from abroad we had a chap from um, Iran not long ago came over and uh, he, he's involved in Iranian windmills which are very very different turbines to what we run here uh, fascinating chap really interesting lovely guy uh, spent a good few hours with us having a look around the mill lots of photographs that kind of thing yeah so yeah it's fun <laughs> When you're here in charge of this, you know, 203, 204 year old machine and you're running it on your own in a good strong wind, it's, it's quite exhilarating. There's always a chance that something will go wrong, so you're always listening out for those strange noises, creaks and groans, keeping an eye on things, but it's, it's busy and it, it's good. And I suppose the other enjoyable thing is actually showing visitors around, people that are really interested in the mill, who uh, sign our um, visitors book um, in a nice way or, or say thank you and you know, letting the kids have a go at running the mill. You know, when I say running the mill, but actually stopping and starting it, so using our uh, uh, striking chain to open and close the shutters on the sails, actually slow the mill down or, or speed the mill up. The kids love doing that kind of thing, so getting them involved. Yeah. Yeah, those kind of things really. And the fact that you're keeping part of English heritage alive. And like I say, it's the only one of its type in the world, so it needs to be kept alive, it needs to be kept going. There are other 12-sided smart tower mills around, but they've either been converted into houses or they're in ruin. You know, so that's, uh, that's, that's a really enjoyable part of it. And should I ever move away, then I will 
travel back regularly. I'll probably have a little caravan on site and uh, come stay and spend my weekends up here.